Today we will be exploring electric potential. So consider this negative charge. This negative charge produces an electric field in its vicinity. Now, if we position a positive charge in this region, we know that positive charge gets attracted to this negative charge. Now, we know this fact and we can visualize this because we are imagining that electric field lines emerge from infinity and terminates at the negative charge. So, if we put a positive test charge here, this positive test charge will go from this point towards the negative charge. Now, electric field, as we all know, is a vector quantity. So just like in mechanics, we have the concept of force and we are able to calculate some kinematic variables and other physical variables using energy consideration or using conservation of energy. There's also a version of that in electromagnetism. And I'm talking about the concept of electric potential. Here, we can visualize electric field, but we can also assume that when you have a negative test charge like this, it somehow alters its vicinity in such a way it appoints each point on this region in its vicinity a scalar value that tells us that when you position a positive test charge here, it has a tendency to move from one region to another. So essentially, we can assign this region with a high scalar value and this region a lower scalar value relative to this blue one. And when you position a positive charge, it has a tendency to move from a higher scalar region to a lower scalar region. In order for us to assign each point in this region a scalar value that will describe its ability to change the state of a positive charge or a negative charge and make it move from one region to another, we will try to convert this electric field into a scalar quantity since electric field is a vector quantity. And one of the easiest ways to convert a vector into a scalar quantity is through a scalar product or a dot product. We, since we would like to derive an equation that results to a scalar quantity from the this point, for example, from point A to point B, we could derive another expression for the distance or the displacement between two and name it as vector r. So the displacement from point A to point B is represented by vector r and we would like to have an expression or an equation that enables us to assign each point in space a scalar quantity and this scalar quantity describes the behavior of charges when placed in that vicinity. So again, as I pointed out, one of the easiest way to convert a vector quantity into a scalar quantity is through dot product or scalar product and since we have a concept of displacement here, we could actually calculate for the work done and since work done is essentially a scalar product we could compute for the work done by the electric field through our positive test charge so let me show the calculations the work done by the electric force from point a to point b on our test charge is equal to the dot product of the electrostatic force times displacement. So this is evaluated from point A to point B. From Coulomb's law, electrostatic force is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, our test charge times the source charge divided by r squared dr. So moving out all the constants from the integral sign, From classical mechanics, when we have a conservative force like gravity, the work done on an object is equal to its change in potential energy. Therefore, each quantity here is actually equal to a potential energy. Since electrostatic force is actually a conservative force. Just like the concept of electric field, if we remove this test charge here, we know that this region is different from this region that is closer to the source charge even without a test charge. And with this, we modify our equation for electric potential energy. So let me rewrite electric potential energy here. 
If we remove the test charge from this electric potential energy, we now have this expression. And we call this expression as electric potential. So again, this is the definition of electric potential. And we use the variable capital B to represent electric potential. So based on this equation, electric potential is defined as electric potential energy per unit charge. The SI unit of electric potential is volt. Based on the equation above, 1 volt is equal to 1 joule per column. Through the concept of electric potential, we can now assign each point in space a scalar value that describes the ability of the vicinity to alter the state of an electric charge under the presence of another charge, like a source charge. When you have a single source charge, a point charge, the electric potential is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R, where Q here is the charge of the source charge. Now, when you have a collection of point source charges, then we could just use superposition principle. We could just add up the influence of each charges when you have a collection of point source charges. Now, when we have a continuous distribution of charge, then this summation here will just become an integral. Now, let me rewrite our equation for the work done on a test charge due to the presence of a source charge. Recall that the definition of electric field is electrostatic force per unit charge. If we divide both sides with the test charge, and replace this W sub E B with this equation, and recall that this is actually the definition of potential. Then we now have an expression for potential difference. Now the sign here, whether it's positive or negative, depends on the electric field or the sign of the electric field. So essentially, if you have a positive charge, then you have a positive electric field. And you have a negative charge, then you'll have a negative sign here. But the important thing is, we now have an expression for the difference of two potentials. And we actually call this potential difference. And we are able to write potential difference in terms of electric field. Note also that if I try to reverse the integration path from here right now, the integration path is from A to B. And if I try to reverse that into integral from B to A, then there will be a negative sign here because the path of integration is now reversed. We also call potential difference as voltage.
Now consider two points, point A and point B. Now the potential at point A is V sub A and the potential at point B is V sub B. Now if the potential difference between point A and point B is 1 volt and you place a charge here at point A with charge Q. When you release the charge, it moves from point A to point B due to a presence of external electric field. And that charge has a charge equal to the charge of the electron. So if I try to calculate the change in potential energy from point A to point B, So if I try to write this in terms of potential, now this quantity of energy here has a special name and its special name is electron volt. So basically one electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So essentially, one electron volt is the energy required for you to move an electron from point A to point B. I'm emphasizing this energy because many particles or movements of particles are described in terms of electron volts. And usually, the kinetic energy of particles or potential energy of particles are described in terms of milli electron volts, kilo electron volts, mega electron volts, giga electron volts, tera electron volts, and so on. Let me have one more comment about electric field. So let me rewrite the concept of potential difference in terms of the integral of electric field. Now, if this is point A, we can measure an electric potential at point A. It is a scalar value. And if this is point B, we can also measure a particular potential at this point, And let's denote it with V sub B. Now, if V sub A is not equal to V sub B, then by virtue of this equation, we are sure that electric field exists from point A to point B. On the other hand, if the value of electric potential V sub A and the value of electric potential V sub B are equal, then this would be equal to zero and electric field is therefore zero. Therefore, if point A and point B belongs to a specific surface and all of the points here have equal potential, then we call this an equipotential surface. And ideally, if you try to slide along or put a charge on an equipotential surface, it must not move because there's zero electric field on that surface. Also, another thing that I'd like to point out is that we could actually write this in terms of electric field and it seems that there is electric field if there is a gradient of potential. So in a way, in electromagnetism, when we talk about electric fields and magnetic fields, we are actually handling a lot of vector quantities. But with the introduction of electric potential, we can now represent a very sophisticated system just by assigning scalar values to each point in space. So that way, it is easier to calculate electrostatic quantities because the electric potential is a scalar quantity. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!